Welcome to the Norm Hyperbolic Podcast. We're here to talk anime, video games, and movies. I am your host, X, also known as Young Morgan Freeman. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Kid Lewis. What's up? It's your boy, Kid Lewis. Welcome back. Welcome back. As you can see, we are well-dressed today in our white shirts and black ties. But if you're on the podcast, you wouldn't be able to see. So well, that's take- why I'm kind of describing it a little bit. Yeah, take our word for it. <laughs> so today's episode, as we have mentioned at the end of the last episode, we are diving into the world of Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man, bro. Yes. So this is uh, one of those animes that I don't think, would you say a lot of people know about this anime? Like if you I think so. It? so. I've mentioned it and, you know, we even just talked to my brother about it. So he's seen it. And he got it through osmosis. But as far as like in the anime community, I think, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if it's, I don't know if it's crossed over into mainstream, but. No, I don't think it's like everybody's top five yeah. or 10, maybe close to 10. But it is one of those like good animes that I feel like needs more recognition, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. And then we're, you know, that's what we're going to be doing today um, yes. in our Chainsaw Man episodes. I've been looking forward to this episode for a little bit. No, so. for sure, for sure. So we dre- we're trying to dress for the part, you know what I mean? And we got some Christmas hats because, you know. It's the Christmas it's- time. Christmas time you gotta you gotta feel the Christmas festival you gotta feel the spirit of Santa Claus yeah. which they have a character named Santa Claus oh they do they do yeah they do damn <laughs> I just remember that they hit me I was like there is a Santa Claus in Chainsaw wow. oh man so so very very festive time very festive time oh and if you guys are listening to this during Christmas time happy uh Merry Christmas Merry Christmas Happy New Year's Happy New Year's Happy Kwanzaa Merry ha- Hanukkah yep yep all those special holidays <laughs> and religions but um definitely merry christmas i hope you guys are having a great time with your family you know um receiving gifts giving gifts um especially with your loved ones and definitely thank you for joining us and listening to this episode on chainsaw man so in this episode we're gonna be talking about chainsaw man just going through a deep dive of the show the production and just you know in our usual fashion for the news i have tweets by one of the executives for jujitsu kaisen about the anime industry Bro, that anime. (laughs) I have been posting that anime on our IG account like crazy. Yeah, that's your anime, bro. That anime is literally legit like getting close to my top number one definitely top five right now yeah. on my list like it's <laughs> so crazy good like just it's well written the action and just map oh man there are cooking over there i know with the whole you know controversial stuff with the writers and the illustrators and the animators over there and how they're being overworked at the end of the day like they are doing a phenomenal job at making this anime and just every episode is like a banger after a banger after a banger and you're just like whoa yeah. like how are they dropping such quality episodes week after week after week you know and then and then there was rumors about it being delayed but it doesn't seem like it's gonna be delayed anytime soon they seem to constantly kind of like stay on that schedule of getting it out when they're supposed to but maybe there might be some contradiction on season three we'll see we'll see we'll only see, time we'll will see. tell but yeah so, man go, go so ahead then, uh D has a game that's coming out and the imdb top 10 movies and shows got released so since we're at the end of the year i thought we could do some of that so if you're watching this on youtube leave us a like subscribe we're dressed as Chainsaw Man characters. Come on. Come on, man. We just got off the shift. <laughs> if you're uh, listening fighting to this. fucking demons. <laughs> They're devils. They're devils. 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 Of fighting devils. Fighting devils. If you're uh, listening to this on your podcast platform of choice, remember to leave us five-star reviews on Spotify. Leave us a comment on Apple Podcasts, and then we'll be reading them out on the podcast. So first, let's go ahead and get into last week's news today. Let, a, let us know, X. Let us know. So first, in the realm of anime. So the uh, Jujutsu Kaisen executive, uh, Terry. Rumi Nishi took to Twitter to share his opinions of Japan's anime industry and its future. So like we've teased before, you know, we are going to do an episode on the pro- studio studio houses mm-hmm. in Japan and how like anime gets adapted. So I've already been doing a little bit of research now, but I want to get more involved in it or you know, give a good deep dive before we yeah. talk about it, like how we would on an episode. Not for sure. <clears throat> so but this executive, he writes 
on Twitter. So he wrote it in Japanese, so they had to translate it. So this is like, you know, r- rough translation. He writes, seriously, it's over. Talking about the industry. Once Kagawa's generation leaves, everything will end at once. We need to do something about training courses by then. Animation studios can't handle the nurturing of new personnel. This is because the ones who have been nurturing animators up until now are all freelance animators. It's impossible for clueless companies that only understand numbers. Numbers. Break that down, man, because <laughs> that sounded down. like very complex. Like, yeah. So, so taking it from the beginning. So, once Kagawa's generation leaves, so this guy died in the. He was born in 1888. So these are like the old head animators, right? So what he's talking about what, once they leave, talking about like the, the new generation coming in. That's what I'm trying to like. That's what I thought I was getting from that. Like, yeah, like he's saying like, hey, once these old head animators that are used to working these hours that are used to being under that pressure. No, not even that. So, okay, what he's what he's talking about is that most of Japan's anime, the scene. okay, and this is just a teaser, I guess (laughs) they're freelance, which means there is no unionization. There's no like minimum wage for animators. Okay. So they set their own prices and it's like it's a negotiation between the studios and the animators and the animators. Okay. So he's saying and he you know he's a seasoned animator he's like a, a veteran or whatever that the only people that are nurturing the growth of these new up, up and coming animators are other animators. So because the, the people at the top are still freelance uh-huh. um these companies that are like trying to have like a team, like how are you talking about the team that MAPA has yeah. with their animators? They're not really nurturing the new up and comers like these other people who are in the game. They're what they're doing is they're looking at numbers. Yeah. And I even have something. The reason I brought this up, to be honest, was because it kind of goes in with what's going on with Chainsaw Man with like the next season, season two, and like the future of Chainsaw Man. Yeah. He he write the last uh thing that he wrote, it's impossible for clueless companies that only understand numbers. So and when you're in business that you live off the numbers numbers don't lie yeah but numbers also don't paint the full picture, picture of what's yeah. going on you know you, things can multiply if you get it give it enough like if you put like how do you make any money off of like a off of free content you know you get the buzz out and then you charge something and then that's when people will buy part two or whatever yeah certain things that you know there's risks that you have to take with all that but basically what he's talking about is that there needs to be more artists in these businesses rather than how it's business been. Business people. Yeah. Would, or well, the, you need, business people are taking over but you Japan's need, anime industry now. No, that's true because it is it, it is a growing industry. Yeah. So there is a lot of potential when it comes to money wise. I can see that. Yeah. But I mean, you still need both. You still need somebody in the background managing the business to bring in the money. But I like you said, like in the end of the day, like numbers don't paint the full picture. You know, just because the company is doing very profitable doesn't mean that the company itself, like the internal of the company is doing great. Um, I see this all the time, you know, with different companies, even hospitals, like I just, I I see like these corporations, they look at everything as numbers. Like, okay, are we profiting this um, quarter? quarter? quarter. Are we meeting the quota? Are we exceeding? But in the internal, like how are our employees doing? Are they being well treated? Are they, because I I always believe firmly, like if you treat your employees right, you know, they're they're, going to be there for the long run. And if you constantly have employees like quitting from left to right, or you're firing employees from left to right because they can't meet up with your quota they can't meet up with whatever standards you had set it takes more money to then rehire more people you know what i mean and then what if you're working on a big project that could potentially be bringing that company a lot of money and they end up losing on that money because they lose on out on employees you know what i mean or employees walk out and i thought from that quote I thought it was more saying like, you know, old heads, animators or people that have been in that industry for such a long time, mm-hmm. you know, they're used to like that being under that pressure because of that mentality that they grew up with. Like I know in Japan, you know, they're very culture when it comes to working and like working hard and, you know, putting in the time at their job and moving up in ranks and promotions, like, you know, stuff like that. Like they're very big when it comes into that. So if that means them staying like an extra couple of more hours after work and knowing that they're not getting paid just so that they can stand out in their workplace, that's something that is very looked up 
upon. But I'm also thinking about like this new so, generation right. of animators that maybe don't want to like they know a little bit more of their self worth and they're not willing to just be like, well, I'm not going to stay and work extra couple of more hours if I'm not going to get paid. Like, you know what I mean? And like when you said freelance on top of that, I'm thinking of like people like, hey, I'll do this project for you and I'll charge you this amount of money to do the project for you. But that's like let them letting you know, like, OK, well, these are my this is my recommendation or these are like my what I recommend for this project. And I'm willing to do it for you. But you have to meet me in the middle. You know what I mean? Especially with this new generation. A lot of these new generation, um, they don't like to work or they don't have the same work ethics as people back then. Does that make sense? Yeah. And th there's an argument about, you know. If you should like, should there be unions in Japan about animators? Because they used they tried to do it a bunch of times, but it all fell through each time. OK, so that's another reason why they're talking about freelance is the way to go. But these new people who are in animations, they're not they're not being guided the right way. I don't know. We, we will talk more about it. You know, I bring it up just because he is a prominent guy in Japan's animation industry. He worked on Jujutsu Kaisen as well as JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yeah. He did Death Note and as well as some Sailor Moon episodes. So, um, the only thing I would um, end up saying or like finish that conversation with is yeah. about like the whole union. I think that if it's a crucial thing to have because... A union? Yeah, over there, um, especially for the animators. I don't, I don't know, know how it is for every other studio. Right. I mean, we're just finding out, you know, we've, we've heard rumors, but nothing was ever concrete just because I guess in Japan is not really is frowned upon to talk negative about your employers or stuff like that. You know, this is not something like just recently coming out like more effectively, like actual employees, like stating you know, what's truly going on in that industry. But so far from what I've seen is a lot of talk is, has been about one certain studio, which is MAPA, right? That's I, the big, that's the, the biggest one as far yes. as like the name. But so there, I can't. There, there's I'm, other studios though. I'm assuming there's probably other studios, but then again, there's probably some good studios that actually do try to meet their employees in the middle. I know you were talking about like, um, what was that studio that tried to give their employees a pay raise? Uh, TMS. TMS to like compensate for their work and stuff like that. So, I mean, there are, I see some studios trying at least from what you're saying, but there's, like I said, there's other studios that look like they're getting bashed really hard by their employees because of the way they're being treated. Definitely, at least here with the Norm Hyperbolic Podcast, we do want to pay the respects to the animators. Yeah, for sure. Because... Look, it, man, it's art, you know, it is art. And like I said, those animators and MAPA are <laughs> fucking killing it with JJK, man. It is ridiculous. This is Lewis' good. favorite anime. It's As of right now, it is. It is my favorite anime, man. I can't not talk great about that anime. Yeah. It's just amazing work. Go ahead. Next right. section, man. Next in the realm of video games. So we were talking about uh, Dungeons and Dragons game. So the game developer for Payday 3, Starbreeze, mm -hmm. they announced that they're going to be working on a Dungeons and Dragons video game project. Um, that They've been working on it for a little bit now. So right now it's titled Project Back's Term. And the game is described as a four player cooperative multiplayer game built using Unreal Engine number five. It's not quite like Baldur's Gate. Have you heard anything about Baldur's Gate? First time hearing about it. So Baldur's Gate is a it's a, D, a Dungeons and Dragons style game. It's on like the newer systems, but then mainly people play it on PC. Have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons, or do you know about Dungeons and Dragons? Have you seen like Stranger Things? I've seen Stranger Things. I've seen the Dungeons and Dragons they played. I've heard of Dungeons and Dragons. I've never played it myself. Yeah. I've even seen the movie Dungeons and Dragons, the oh. new one that they released. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that one. I mean, the movie was okay. I, wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't say like waste your time. I just had time in my hands, so I decided to watch it. Yeah, it well, was so, something great, but whatever. So Dungeons and Dragons, it's a role playing game. Uh, greetings, adventurers. Greetings. So most of the game or the whole game is played in your imagination. Uh, this is my cousin Tyrell, and he will be controlling the player character. His name is Kanye. Mm -hmm. He's a giant, yo. Or, you know, maybe on the tabletop if you have any figures or whatever. But mm -hmm. um, the thing about Baldur's Gate is that it adapts Dungeons and Dragons combat style. Kanye the Giant slaps that bitch. Oh! So it's like turn base and every per every person's turn is like six seconds within mm -hmm. the real world. And then you can move like a certain amount of feet and then you do a turn. So you can do an attack and then move or you can move and then attack. And then there's like certain sp stipulations and there's like bonus attacks and all these different like stats yeah. that you can do. So 
Okay. So this is going to be set in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. So how you were talking about the movie, that movie is supposed to take place in one of the many fictional worlds that is Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. So the game will be set in Waterdeep. And it isn't a turn-based game, nor does it feature dice rolling, which is a, a big part of Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons, like you roll to see if you're successful on your attacks. Kaida the giant attempts to slap the bartender. Here, the bartender is half Hobbit and very nimble, so you're going to have to roll an 18 or above to hit 20. Blip, slap that Hobbit's d off, yo. Or whatever, or whatever the hell you want to do. Yeah, I love that game. You can do anything. How do you begin your adventure? I want to get some bitches. You know, as long as the dice help you. So, um, however, Starbreeze, the company, they also note that the game isn't a hack and slash. So from the initial descriptions, it sounds like the game will be either a fantasy version of Payday mm -hmm. or something closer to Diablo. So we were talking about Payday in a different episode, how I wanted to get it. Like it's a game. Payday 2 is a game that I played before and I really love. But Payday 3 came out and there was like mixed reviews on it. But so the last thing I have is Starbreeze plans to release the game in 2026. Jesus. <laughs> I know. And we were talking about Grand Theft Auto right before the podcast. But yeah, like, about... I, like I'm not waiting on this. You know, it, it would be kind of cool. And, and they do have Baldur's Gate, which I, I'm not playing right now. But 2026, that is a That's long three time. Years from That's now. longer than Grand Theft Auto, they said. Yeah, which is supposed to be. Really <laughs> release in 2025 i know um which me and xavier just talked about it and we're thinking that it might be towards the end during holiday season i know i'm hopeful that it'll come out in summer in like the summer of that year just to, like hit the summer vibes with yeah. the miami yeah but, <laughs> yeah. but i can also see the them summertime magic vibe <laughs> yeah but i really can also see them just dropping it during holiday time because that's what they did for the gta 5 they dropped it during the holiday time they did so that people can get the new consoles and but remember so they, they released it early enough that it released before for even the, the holidays yeah before it came out mm -hmm. that's true that's true so we'll see. We'll, we'll see man but i am excited about the game the game the trailer looks very florida if yeah. you live in Florida, that trailer screen Florida, the whole alligator. Or even if you see it from like, you know, from the news. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just it, everything screened Florida, man. Just the the alligators being pulled out of people's pools. Like that's a, a thing. Like that's an actual thing here in Florida to have that. Or, you know, the whole Miami um, strip was dope. You know, the, the jet skis, the boats and it's, everything just screamed. Even the swamp. Yeah. You know, and I've done that before too. Like I've been on those um the airboats. Airboats to the swamp. Like I've done that before in the Everglades, like everything about it. But from what people have been saying about the map, um, it seems like a lot of the map was showing um like the like Vice the side City. of Vice City and then I guess was supposed to be like the Everglades, which is the middle portion of the map. That's what people are saying. Um they still have Key West. Or I don't know what they're calling it in the game, but it's supposed to be like a representation, a representation of Key West. And then they have the other side of the map, which is supposed to be another city, um, which I thought that that was supposed to represent um, like Naples, Fort Myers kind of thing or yeah. Tampa on the other side. Because Tampa is a pretty big city, too, like next to Miami, next to Orlando, next to um, Key West. Like those are like the four crucial cities right in Florida. Would you say? I would say, oh, yeah, Orlando. So I thought, so I heard rumors or whatever about um, them that they might have like a Disney World style yeah, area. Yeah, like a theme but, park kind of style to but it. But that's right? like mid central Florida. So we'll see. I mean, it's, you know, it's all fictional too. So they can't just like squeeze it together. And yeah. Like, no. We'll but, see, man. But I'm excited though. The game really looks very promising and it's something that I'm definitely going to pre order. <laughs> yeah, and you could pre order play. it right now if you could. <laughs> I could. I I think a lot of people would pre-order it right now if they could. Yeah. There's no questions asked, man. You know you're going to get it. So you what's the whole, wait 2 years. <laughs> yeah, pay it. What else what else can you do but wait the years, man? You can pay like maybe like 30 cents a day and, and by the time it comes out it'll be Look, paid off. I rather them take their time and when the game drops it be a like a perfectionist game. Yeah. Um, Cause it reminds me of the games. Uh, have you ever played cyberpunk? No. So cyberpunk was supposed to be like the game of the year. It, like the way they were advertising it, the way they kept talking about the gameplay, the map and they everything. Had Keanu Reeves in it. They, I mean, they pulled all the strings, but it kept getting delayed. It kept getting delayed. It kept getting delayed because, you know, whatever technical difficulties or they were just fixing, patching up whatever they needed to patch up. But eventually they ended up dropping it. 
but people were like disappointed because there were so many glitches in the game and they were like why and then you know what i mean because i think at the end of the day it's a business you know you build so much hype on it you don't want it to die down by not and it costs a lot of money to build that hype you know to promote it yeah but the video game industry they make a lot of money like these video game companies make a lot of money like they I think they make more money than movies they do but what i'm saying is that sometimes when you rush something it can hurt you at the end yeah you know what i mean and i know with cyberpunk it hurt i hurt it hurt them a little bit just because they dropped the game that wasn't really meant to be dropped right away I know they, there was a lot of delays, but like I said, I'd rather them take their time and then me get like an actual good version of the game than have to wait later or months for an update to patch whatever glitches the game has. You know what I mean? And sometimes those glitches can really fuck up the game. Yeah. And they can really fuck up the business because, you know, we live in a world where everything is recorded. So if they found a glitch in a game, you know, it's going to be posted like, oh, there's a money glitch where you can get unlimited money if you do this or whatever. You know, people are really good when it comes to, like, exposing stuff. Yeah. You know? So. No, nah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Well, both of those games are coming out in, like, two to three two years. Two to three years. <laughs> <laughs> so, last, in the realm of movies. What's good with movies, bro? So, we're at the end of the year. So, IMDb released their uh, year's top tens movies and shows based on a collection of data from their IMDb Pro Movie Meter. Uh-huh. which uses um, page views to determine like popularity and interest. So I'm just going to go ahead and give these to you and, and you tell me what you think about these shows. And go for you, it. I feel like you're pretty versed in like what's I try. right now. In, I try. In movies. So these are the top. I'll start with shows. Do you want me to go from the bottom or from the top? Uh, Go from the bottom. From the bottom. So we have at the at number 10, Gen V. Ooh, that's a good show. Now you're saying that it does live up to the hype of the boys. It does. It does. I, I, I think everybody would agree that Gen V lived to the hype of the boys. Yeah. And the fact that they're getting a reboot for season two. Of Gen V. Of Gen V is to show you how good it was. Yeah. A friend of mine, she's watching it now for the first time. And I was like, you know, watching it with her or whatever. And I think it's graphic, though. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, it's so funny, like for me to anticipate it. And then I'm like waiting for her to be like, oh, we're damn. Yeah, no, it's it's I, graphic. I, freaking, I love, but I show. think I love that because I love the. It's cute, the, and it's some, sometimes it is a little shock value, but I don't know. Like they just do it so nice. Okay, you know how we like grow up with um superheroes like the Flash, Superman, and Batman, and stuff like that, right? And it's in in their realistic world or in that world, they're the good guys. They're there to protect. But there's also that thought of like, what if Batman or what if Superman? In reality, gets corrupted. But they do that all the time in DC. Like, but I love there's, that man. Yeah, because I feel like that's so more my, realistic. So does I, my dad. <laughs> I feel like that's just way more realistic. We live in a world where corruption is super easy, and but the idea of a superhero is that they're the they're the guy. good guys. I know, but they just like <laughs> it's an escape sh- escape from you know. But the I just world. love it, man. Like, I just love it. And especially with the boys in Gen B, like, they really talk about, like, how social media and how the world really works. And just let's add superheroes on top of that. Nice. And how, like, it's just crazy. Like, definitely recommend Watch the Boys and definitely recommend Watch Gen B. You have to. It's just, <laughs> it's really good. All right, All right man. What's so, next? So, number nine, we have The Bear. So, we talked about it on our Food Wars episode. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it either, but I'm dying to watch it. It so looks guess, really good. Well, I guess it's about food. Yeah. Um, so, then number eight, we have Ted Lasso, which I think is an Apple TV show. Yes. And everybody at my job loves this show. So, I've seen like um, videos of it. I think it's about soccer, right? I don't know. I think I he's a no soccer idea. Coach and he got invited to train a soccer league okay. and I don't know somewhere else. The way and they describe it is that it's very earnest, like it, like Ted Lasso. He's like a real, like upbeat, like very, like just a nice guy. Yes, <laughs> yeah. From what I've seen from the trailers, yeah, I haven't seen it personally, like episode by episode, but I think I have a general gist of what the show is about. So number seven, we have the fall of the House of Usher. Never. Which I heard is not about Usher. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, we have One Piece. It made the top 10. That's crazy. Right? The life animation, the, life adaptation, right? Yep. 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 Yeah, that's six. crazy, man. And so we, so we, for listeners of the podcast, we have a review on that one on Watch it. YouTube. Oh, yeah. So number five, we have The Mandalorian, which is still going strong. I um, see that. Number four, we have Black Mirror, 
which I haven't seen. I haven't finished it. I haven't it. seen this new season. I haven't finished it. I've seen like maybe, I think there's only like four episodes, four or five, but I've seen two of them. Um, I need to get back on it, but I don't know. I do that sometimes like where I'll just, I get worried about finishing a show. <laughs> so I'm glad that I have more episodes to watch, but I do need to watch it. And then number three is Succession, which I think is another one of those like Paramount or Apple TV shows. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't know anything about it, to I be honest. Me neither. Number two, we have Ahsoka, which is that. Oh, I've been uh, talking about that one. You have it. Have you been able to watch it? <laughs> I've gotten through episode two so far. Yeah. What do you think? It's good, man. I like it. I like the story. Yeah. I like then, the actors too. Yeah. Well, yeah. Star studded cast. Yeah. And then number one, we have The Last of Us. Woo! So again, that all that was a good, good one. You haven't seen it yet. I seen the first episode, but I don't, I don't have any interest in watching it. Like it's, you know, it's. I mean, it's kind of repetitive because it is based off the game. So if you already played the game, you kind of already know what I the story is heading. I played the game like three times, bro. Yeah, but I mean, for the people that have never played the game or played it but never really finished it, yeah, we the about show it. is good. Like you're not going to be disappointed, and especially if you heard of the game, never played it, watch the show at least because. You're going to be like, damn, maybe I should pick up the game. That's my recommendation. If you like the show, just play the game. Yeah. I think it's going to make you want to play the game. Just because oh, so. there's just more to the story through the game. And then you get more information about like, you know what I mean? Because it is based off the game. So it's just a good game, too. Yeah. I love no, for game. sure. So then next, right. uh, the movies. So these are the top 10 movies. And this these are all, again, through popularity and page views. OK. So from the bottom. We have number 10, The Flash. How is that even top 10? Lewis's favorite. How is DC that even end? top 10? <laughs> DCU show. How did it movies. even end up in top 10 movies, man? So again, I thought is... it was a fail. How is The Flash on the top 10, man? But then again, like, have you ever um, heard of like a bad movie or like maybe a movie that you thought could have been promising and people tell you like, oh, no, it was, it was horrible. Like, it was just bad. But your your intuition is still like... Let me watch it. Why? Like, why is it so bad? Like, let me see with my own eyes. Like, so I wh- like bad movies. <laughs> I just so I like not that I like all movies. I just like watching a movie. Uh-huh. But I will enjoy a bad movie if it's fun enough. Like funny? Just fun. Like just fun to laugh at this movie or like, you know, real weird and cheesy things that they were like, OK, let's leave that in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason I even watched The Flash, man, I was just so intrigued about the fact that people were saying how terrible it was to the point that I was like, well, let me watch. Because I said, I, 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 it's I, like a car crash. You just can't look away. Yeah. Like you just like, let me just see what made it so bad. And then like right from the first 10 minutes of it, you're like, OK, I see now yeah. no. <laughs> why it was so bad. Like it was. That's just crazy, but so, never mind. Yeah, so yeah. that was number 10. And then number nine was Killer of the Flower Moon. I've never seen that one or heard of it. Or Killers of the Flower Moon. It's like a Leonardo DiCaprio. And I think I forget the director, but it's like one of those big directors. Yeah. Um, number eight, we have Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Ooh, love that movie. We we here at the Norm Hyperbolic Podcast love Spider-Man Across oh, the Spider-Verse. Oh, for sure. Next time we do a Spider-Man episode, we're going to just have Spider-Man suits on. <laughs> yeah, ma- mask and everything. <laughs> mask and everything. <laughs> So number seven, we have Five Nights at Freddy, and that have uh, you seen that one? I haven't seen it. My uh, my son went to go see it. He went uh, to see it on Halloween. Oh, I saw it the other day with my um kids. They yeah. went to go see it with their mom. Yeah, and they wanted to go to the movies to see it, but I managed to convince watch, them to go again. No, I I managed to just um watch it on my TV, so we watched it at home instead. Oh, okay. But it was good. I liked it, man. I liked it. The story was it wasn't bad compared to like because sometimes when they do like a video game to a life adaptation, sometimes it just doesn't go but the story was actually pretty decent so i can't be like oh it was horrible no it was pretty good no and it was the highest grossing horror movie of the year this year so really it was yeah because probably kids yeah i mean blumhouse you know blumhouse they got some bangers but not always it's makes i mean it's you know scary it's movies. a it's scary a hit movies or miss- are not they, like no you, you kind of have to know what you're going into it's a scary movie there is some scary movies that they literally hit on the nail and then there's some scary movies that you're just like uh they could have they, their imagination wasn't all there. They could have done better. <laughs> six. Uh, number six, we have uh, the Super Mario Bros. movie. That was good. That, was, that one was uh, good. Number five, we have John Wick Chapter 4. Too long. And then num- <laughs> <laughs> on number four, we had The Little Mermaid, which I forgot Never came seen out this it. year. I have not seen it yet. That, that show must have came out like January. Yeah. 
Um, and then number three, we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Loved it. Loved that movie. Loved it. <laughs> Highly recommend it. Like, the story was told so perfectly. Yeah. It was a masterpiece. And best then, Guardian. Would you would you say that one is the best Guardian of the Galaxy volume? Uh, or did you have a, or did you think one or two were better? So I'm kind of, I'm kind of a purist sometimes. So I do like the first one. The first one is just so great. Same like when we were talking about the Across the Spider-Verse. Uh-huh. I think the first one is a little bit better just because it's the first one. Yeah. Number two kind of like built on it, but it built on it in a very natural, organic way or whatever. So this one being the third one of Guardians of the Galaxy, it was really good. And I did like it a lot, but it didn't, it, like it wasn't magical or it wasn't like, I don't think it was meant to be magical because no, it meant was to, but, more... But you're asking me, like, which one I like better? Which one know? do you like better? I like the first one. One, two, three. You I like the first, first one better, I like yeah. the third one, man. The third one? Yeah. Definitely. I mean, the third one's good. I'm the not... story was way much better than the first one. Yeah. But the first one, I, I can't see. Like, it was more uplifting, more positive, more yeah. funny. Yeah, it was feel good. It was feel feel good. good. Like, a feel good. The third one was, like, mm, not so much of a feel good, like, emotionally wise. Like, you're not leaving the movie theater, like, joyful. You're there, leaving there, it crying. Yeah, you there was moments to to that you wanted to cry. Agency. Yeah, and just adopt the raccoon for no reason. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was memes about it all, all over the internet, just about like wanting to um, rescue a raccoon or like people going outside just to like really? give raccoons food because well, I, it well, just I love felt bad. <laughs> well, I, I follow this page on Instagram that is just a bunch of raccoons. raccoons. <laughs> yeah, I love raccoons. Oh, I bet you that page blew the hell up. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, why are we getting so many followers? <laughs> I know, overnight. <laughs> and then number one and number two is the Barbenheimer. We got number one is Oppenheimer and number two is Barbie. Have you, can you believe that I have not seen one or two? You haven't seen Barbie or Oppenheimer? No. Damn. So they came out with it on like Blu-ray or whatever. And I'm waiting for them to release them both together. I don't know why they haven't done that. But those are two really good movies too. No, I have not seen. I will definitely watch number one. I do like the whole concept of They're like the atomic bomb. bangers, and, bro. But number Promise two, I'm not, Barbie? A, I'm not a big fan of Barbie. You don't have honest. To be honest, I don't want to say nobody, but that's not the cell. The cell is not Barbie. Like the cell is the comedy and all these different things. And it's, you know. And the big name actors that they got playing they these got roles. mad actors in I this know. movie. I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it, but especially you haven't seen it. But no, I no seen you should it. definitely watch it. And I'm good with spoilers, bro. <laughs> I, know, I know you are. <laughs> all right, man. All right, so that's it. That's it for that's the it. news. Oh, shit, man. That went through real quick. Well, now it's time for the meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes. Jumping into the chainsaw world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, so Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man, man. So the manga was written by Tatsuki Fujimoto, serialized in Weekly Shonen Jump from 2018, December to December 2020. Okay. With the second arc beginning serialization on Shonen Jump Plus app, which is, I keep saying app, um, it's just the online version of Shonen Jump, uh, July uh, 2022. So follows protagonist Denji, mm-hmm. a poor young man who's working to pay off his parents' debt after their passing. What was his dad? I think it's just his dad. Just his dad. <laughs> and then um, he lives in a world of devils. So these devils are kind of like demons and demon slayer, but I think that they're a little bit more evil and more powerful. Um, and the powers range widely depending on what the devil is so yes. um the devils they're born of human fears so if enough people fear something that they're you know you can be sure that there's a devil for it so they have like zombie devils bomb devils sword devils all all different types of devils okay denji meets puchita which is a chainsaw devil dog and they're both just two dogs down on their luck um they become friends and then become decide to become devil hunters to make some money to buy food so before i get into more about that what do you think about the anime bro um, or in general because so just to be straight with everyone i haven't seen the end or i've seen a i try to watch it man i promise to try to watch it so the story overall what do you think the story is really good it's compelling it like brings you in just like the whole creativity of the devil and denji himself and just like how naive he is and how he's like really open-minded but very direct about like the things that he wants yeah I've never I've read the manga just for this um podcast right. but normally when I started Chainsaw Man it was 
through the animation so just season one alone Mm -hmm. and just watching it and i fell in love i was like yo i really like the whole concept i like the whole concept of him turning into the chainsaw man and having a chainsaw for head and chainsaw for arms and just cutting through shit and it's very graphic and very itchy also yeah you know there is moments where you're like whoa that's that's a little a little little risky a little risky on the on the anime side so Um, i will say just for this episode we are just going to be talking about the first season so you know even though i've read the manga i made sure to just cover the first arc so what is technically the first arc because i've read it to where to the ending it feels like the ending of chainsaw like i thought that's where it ends but then it restarts again with him going back to high school which kind of threw me off and i read a couple of chapters from there on and from what i've heard of line like Whoa, that no spoilers bro just no no, no spoilers yeah. no i'm saying like from what i read online like that arc is more of like they, they go into like a more deeper explanation of what a devil is or like how they forecome or like more about their powers kind of thing. Yeah. So that's what people have been saying about like, so I'm, I'm considering that like the second arc. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. It's so it's the arc after the first. So arc. the first arc is like um, what we're going to be discussing the most. Um, that's really where I've read the most and try to understand. And um, they built, you know, it's just season one from that arc alone. Right. But I'm I'm, I'm not ready to jump into the second arc. So there might be a season two or a episode two for our podcast, just diving into that second arc. But I yeah. know the second arc was more like complex in the sense of like they tried to explain more about the devils. Yeah. I mean, there's. There's a lot going on. So it is more personal and it is more about Denji, um, which what I like about it. And the story does kind of get away after everything uh, blows over. But it's just, I don't know, man, like it, uh, it's just so fun and funny. The writer, uh, Fujimoto, he wrote the manga. He, re- he previously before this one wrote a manga called Fire Punch. So it was also serialized through sh- the Shonen Jump Plus app. Mm-hmm. So he wanted to eventually write for Weekly Shonen, the magazine, but thought that his style of stories would get like buried under and against these other jump like mangas so you know we watch a lot of shonen jump mangas and uh animes on this podcast i don't want to say once you've seen one you've seen them all but they follow like a similar story like you have your hero he's a little bit of an underdog and then he like grows stronger as he like climbs like the demon lair or you know trying to be the number one hero or you know the greatest saint or the hokage or the president or whatever you know Yeah. these shonen protagonists go through he thought with chainsaw man that his shit would get buried that it wouldn't you know stack up against it's not a shonen they're like there's no tournament arc you know like there always is there's yeah. no nothing like that currently the second arc is titled the school arc so it's only being released right now on the shonen jump plus app um he says that there's little difference though with working with the shonen jump magazine and the shonen jump plus since he's worked with them before on this fire punch mm-hmm. um and only a few times did his ideas get rejected in the rough draft phase but for the most part, they gave him like, you know, the liberty to do whatever he wants with the logic of his stories. He says this about the anime. Uh, Chainsaw Man is like a copycat of Dodo Hidero. Have you ever seen that? I want to say yes. Is that the one with the alligator head? Yes. Yes. And I've seen it. Seen it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's, so, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. So he says it's a copy of that and Jujutsu Kaisen, which I'm just going to say JJK because you said that to me one time and I was like, I, I like that better than. Yeah. So I'm saying the whole thing. Yeah. Really <laughs> JJK. So he said it's a copycat of those two animes and the studio who produced those animes want to do Chainsaw Man. Please do it. Just a little bit about the production of the anime. Was it MAPPA that did um, season one? Yeah. So okay. uh, it was produced by MAPPA That's airing why from so October 2020 to December 22 as well. Now, for the first season, that only went, you know, 12 episodes. Yeah. So, which sucks because you wanted more. Right. And was, well, so I, I I said it in the top of the episode. I am not a fan of the animation style because of the CGI, right? Because of the CGI, and not and I don't hate CGI, but just me being a fan of the manga. Uh huh. That manga is so it, you know it's black and white or whatever. But when you okay, let me from the beginning. It's beautiful. It's a beautifully detailed manga. Yeah. So I think that the CGI is like a little bit lazy and it cheapens a lot of the stuff. Like when you see him jumping around and things like that like i don't know it feels weightless like it and i know it looks like anime but every time i see it i can't help but think of like jimmy neutron and you know shit like that okay to me 
it, I just know it would look 10 times better if it was 2D animated. I try to give it another chance for this episode. And I promise you, normies, I tried to watch this anime. And it was like, it's only 12 episodes. I can fucking knock that shit out. But I just couldn't. You couldn't? I could not, bro. I, I <laughs> How just, far did you get in? I got to like the third episode. And that was, you're like, yes, man. You felt like you were being thrown up in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, man. Really, that ass. <laughs> So uh, what I was also trying to say is like when you are reading it, and I read, you know, I read the whole thing on the Shonen Jump app. Uh huh. Um, and this is not a plug or whatever, but when you go into like each, but it could be. <laughs> <laughs> if you go when, once you get through the volumes, because you know you do them chapters, and then each volume has like ten chapters or whatever it is. They show you the title or like the cover art for each volume, mm-hmm. and the manga is in black and white, but the covers are just so vivid. Like there's like a cover, and I, you know, I put it in the video version where. Uh, what's that girl or makima makima she's like you know she's like standing next to chainsaw man and she's got there's like a test intestines all over the place and but the intestines are like neon blue yeah bright greens and pinks and it just looks so cool i know the manga wouldn't be like that or the anime wouldn't be like that but i just have that appreciation with the 2d art where yeah. and just anime and studio in general so i just i think they dropped the ball with making it i know Mappa has like a lot on their plate and they're trying to, you know, strike while the iron's hot. Like it took two years for the um, anime to come out after it was already written. But I don't know, man. I think that I think I think they missed. It's a missed opportunity. Hey, let me ask you this, though. Do you think that the hype for Chainsaw Man is like dying down, though? I mean, it is because it's over. But I think I think it can easily just pick back up again, to be honest. That yeah. ass. Just because, so because I just don't hear a lot of people talking about it. That's why I'm asking. Like, I mean, it's, like you know, I said, it's between only, our, it's only between my episodes. anime friends. You know, I don't, I don't really. It's not an so, anime that we passionately talk about. Not like JJK or One Piece or right. Um, a lot of that does have to do with hype. But I feel like with this one, when it was at its height, I felt like all of my friends were talking about this, and I feel like it was very like you know. That's true. And and it that's how like I nice. felt when um like when I was first watching it, like it was such a great anime that I thought a season two was going to be like around the corner for it. Right. right and right. I'm surprised that it's been taking this long for and it, still there is no official date for a season two. I mean, there's been talk and rumors about potentially uh, maybe sometime next year for season two for Chainsaw Man. But like I said, as of this very moment, there is no confirmed date on that. Right, right. And, the, the, and so I do, I do have the rumors here, but I don't want to blame Mappa and I don't want to blame this guy being like inexperienced because he only has this one other manga that made it to serialization before Chainsaw Man. But mm-hmm. I just think the thing that sets it apart from all these other like My Heroes or even Jujutsu Kaisen, to be honest, Jujutsu Kaisen, My Hero, uh, Attack on Titan, is that it is very stylish, that it is very goofy. And you, yeah. know, you ha- it, it it's simple, like you trade demons for devils. And, you know, at towards the end of the first arc, at least for me, the story kind of got away from me where I, and especially because of the art, like there's so much going on that you don't really you don't lose the motion. But I was like, what the hell is going on? And at least for me, I get to sit with it longer when I'm reading it. So I'm yeah. just like looking at it and I can just go back and I'm like, it's just. Well, there is really moments good. that you're just like trying to figure because. I feel like there's times where the story feels really simple and you feel like you can follow along and then they hit you with some like complexity to the story. Like there's more underneath the layers and you're like, okay, so there's more to the story than just Denji being Denji. You know what I mean? Like in in the same time, you're also trying to figure out like about the, the organization and how that place and then about the devils itself like how you know how strong is denji because i've also like it's so it always hits in my mind mm -hmm. how you had mentioned like a devil is as strong as a somebody fears right that devil right right so or fears that object or whatever it is Mm. my thing is like how strong is the chainsaw man if in reality i don't think there i I mean in the anime we know how strong he is but like in reality i'm like you know do people fear chainsaws do people really fear chainsaws that much so and i I think (laughs) this is not a spoiler but the thing about chainsaw man devils fear chainsaw man 
So that's what makes them more stronger. So that's what. So and they haven't re- revealed it. And I remember when we were talking about Attack on Titan, like how much of Attack on Titan was pre-planned. So with this one, it does look kind of straightforward. And this guy, you know, I don't know, I don't know him, but for, at least from the interviews that I was uh, watching, uh-huh. he he looks and sounds kind of like Lucy Goosey. He does like <laughs> real, like not goofy, but like. He's probably Denji, <laughs> you know, yeah. he probably is like just like this cool guy who's not really like he doesn't take things too, too seriously. Yeah. And I think that's really good about this anime is like you you feel like the animator or the illustrator that wrote this wasn't really taking it like like they're not trying to make the next Attack on Titan something so complex and twists and turns. I mean, there is know, twists and turns because I feel like that's what makes the story a little bit more compelling or maybe draw people in. But the thing that I was saying is so, you know, when. So, okay, in in this anime or in the manga, they have like these things called fiends. So fiends are devils that possess a dead body. Yes. So um, the thing about these fiends is that when they possess a dead body, they retain the personalities of the devil. So if like I die and the box devil comes to possess my body, it's not me. It's, is it the, box it's the box or devil. fox? The, whoever the, the, uh, the you know the, the who is fearing boxes? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. People yeah, that, were people were claustrophobic. Damn, bro, I don't know, man. That's the worst devil to be. I know, right? <laughs> well, no, but like the same thing with power. Like power is a fiend. She's a where fiend. she is, what what is she like? The blood? She's the blood devil. The blood devil. So blood devil took over this female's body, right? But when and she's her personality is based off like she is the blood devil. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't change. Like Denji is a hybrid. Right. Where he is possessed by a devil, but he still retains his own personality. Yeah. And they even say that the the devil is still alive in his body. Yes. Everyone except for power says that. The thing that I was going to say is that these devils, when they when they die, because sometimes they come back, the last thing that they hear before they die or before they come back or in between or whatever is the revving of a chainsaw. You know, he might have just thrown that out there, too, as far, you know, whatever. But if it does come back at the end, like I was even trying to speculate, like, you know, what is it about a chainsaw that like, is it a blend of like man and machine or I don't know, you know, because it's not because, you know, you have the bomb devil and you have the katana devil. Yeah. These are also man made weapons. But what makes the chainsaw more fearable? Like, why? What is it about him that? other devils fear him or want him i don't know yeah because everybody wants his heart like all the devils want everybody the like man's literally heart. denji is the like he's so popular that everybody right. wants him like he's like why do people want me like i'm a nobody right right you know what right. i mean and it's because he has the chainsaw and you, and i feel like you don't really understand that from the very beginning of the show because you just you're just like in denji's mind of him just being like poor yeah like literally to him his dream of just having a, a full sandwich with tomatoes, I, lettuce, and I know. you know that is like a goal of his. You know, and it's something that we eat on a regular basis. But for him, it's like that's a dream come true. You know, and but he slowly gets to these goals. Um, yeah, you know, he 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 ups his goals little by little. But yeah. it's like goals that you're just like, uh, like really out of everything you can possibly have a goal for. But the thing is, just he's just so simple minded, and he's just very like pin focused on whatever comes through his mind. And he's like, okay, that's what I want to do, yeah. or like that's my goal. You know what I mean? Like I think like in, in one of the episodes. He, him, Denji and um, Aki, they go into this, I think it's like an apartment where one of the bodies that died got overtaken by a devil. Oh, the first one. Yeah. He like, Denji like, just like kills him, but like in a very clean way. Yeah. And he says. He doesn't turn into the chainsaw He doesn't turn. He's like, I didn't have to. He says the reason he didn't do it was because he noticed that there was. Uh, pornography magazines yep. and he was just focused on getting those and he, he want, said he if I turn them. yeah he if wanna, I turn into the chainsaw oh, this, I'm going to rip through this person apart and it's going to be blood and guts everywhere yeah. and I don't want to ruin those magazines because I want those for later but that's what I mean like just simple minded like just he's ooh. great man he's so, he's so fun and funny man So he, which makes the person funny you know and I think that's what makes the, sh- the, the anime so light in that sense like it's not heavy but then you do start figuring out that there is like layers to this you know once you start learning more about like makima and her plans and how she plays a huge a huge role and you know and about aki and his background and yeah. you know the things that he's been through and the reason why he's part of the um public safety um organization right 
So, but yeah, keep going, so, man. So as far as, so the manga, so the manga won a couple of awards back in 2021. Uh, manga Barcelona and the Shogakukan manga's best shonen manga um so they won that award and then there the harvey awards best manga three years in a row oh wow so the anime also won japan's expo award for best opening so that's a question i wanted to ask you how do you feel about the opening i'm trying to think of it i love the opening you like the opening i do like the opening it it, it made me hopeful and that maybe that's why i was let down because I, I just wanted it to be so good yeah but just even like you i don't know i don't know if i'll be able to play it. i think i'll be able to play it we won't we definitely won't be able to play it in the podcast but as far as in the youtube version it goes it's like real funky man it goes <laughs> It's so <laughs> it's so nice. If you want, I, I would say we can pause and I'll fucking I think you should no, 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 I, I, I believe you, man. I think the so there's a bunch of like movie references in the opening as well. Yes, I think I've heard of that. Yeah. So they have like you know the big Lebowski. Like there's like a scene where he's like uh, cleaning the balls, uh, yeah. the bowling balls, um, and he just does it in like this funny way. And then a lot of Quentin Tarantino movies. Yeah. So there's a scene of like from Pulp Fiction. Um, all the characters are dressed like Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. Like the freaking, you know, the white shirt and the black tie. So like, oh, we are. <laughs> oh, we are. So that you can tell that at least the animation house has a lot of like appreciation for um, Western these different movies just in general because, oh, yeah, Western media. Yeah. Because, you know, none of that's there is no there's no opening in the manga, you know. So that's true. I will say as far as like for a manga or for an anime that I don't really care for, <laughs> like it does have a very good opening. Like I love the song. I even saw like, you know, when it came out, they played the opening, but then they put Gangnam style over it and it just fit. <laughs> and that kind of like, you know, should tell you, you know, how the show is or whatever. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get into favorite characters and moments. So, Lewis, what are your favorite characters? Who are your favorite moments? So, characters and moments. I think my favorite character, and I think she's underplayed just because the way she comes out is uh, Kobeni. So she's part of the organization of the public safety, but she's a uh, part of like maintaining the devils, I guess, like a handler. Okay. Because that's the way I see them. Like um, Kobeni, Himeno, and Aki are like handlers of Denji and power, you know, make sure that they stay in line and they're not, they're not just doing whatever the hell they want to do. Yeah. So with Kobeni... I feel like her character is very funny because she's only there because she says she gets great benefits, um, a great salary. And since she didn't go to college like her older sister or younger sister did, like this is a way of like, you know, at least giving back to her parents or like showing or making her parents proud. But she's like low key does not want to be there because she knows like what the job entitles. Like she knows that it entitles fighting devils, Uh, (laughs) which is very risky, which is very risky job and just putting herself in a situation where she probably doesn't want to be in. So um, but then she does show like why she is good at what she does. Like when it comes to like hand to hand combat, you're surprised by like, whoa, like for a person that doesn't want to be there or a person like, oh, I'm only here for the money and I do want to quit, but we're getting close to the Christmas bonuses. Right. Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. She's really good with the hand to hand compact. So the, her character surprises me sometimes. And it's just it's just funny because I feel like she's one of those relatable characters where you I don't know if people but, you know, I've been in a job where I'm just there because the money's pretty good and they have pretty good bonuses and benefits, but you hate the job, but you're like, eh, yeah. might as well suck it up because, you know, <laughs> so I feel like that's, she's the type of person Like she's just like, I'm just here to collect for the, the paycheck, to yeah. collect the paycheck. <laughs> but she's really like, when it comes to hand to hand combat, she's pretty good. Okay. Which is surprising. So, and then favorite moment yeah, or like a, a favorite moment in the anime. Or like a standout moment. Standout moment. Um, at the beginning of the season where um, Denji is fighting the Bat Devil. Yes. And he like ends up killing the Bat Devil. But then his the Bat Devil's girlfriend, which is like a slug. I think so. Appears. I or the slug devil. I can't remember exactly what type of devil it was. And Denji is like out of blood. And he's like, my dream is to touch boobs. Yeah. And she was like, well, my dream is to kill all humans and, you know, be top devils with my, well, dead boyfriend now, the bat devil. And he was like, well, I will fight you to see which dream is better. Right, right. And right. she ends up technically winning. But then Aki shows up with the fox devil and that- just does the little bam. And it just summons the fox devil. And the fox devil just comes and just eats it. And it's just like done. I was like, yo, that's so... And it reminds me of the um, Nine-Tailed Fox from... 
Yeah, the way he looks. Yeah, the way it looks. So I just thought it was dope. I like that part. Yeah. That's my favorite part, man. <laughs> I mean, there is gross moments too that I was thinking about, like the throw up scene or yeah. the scenes between him and Makima. Or I think my the funniest scene is when he is with Power, and I think they're like in this bending machine aisle, and this is where Power is like telling Denji how she has a cat. But the cat is being held captive by the bat devil. Right. And like then she's like, okay, so like, why do I give a fuck? And then he's she's like, Well, you know, if you help me out, I'll do anything you want, you know. And then he's like, something about like touching her boobs. And yeah. she was like three times or some shit. And then when he she agrees, he's like his all his whole like attitude change, like, fuck the bat devil. You know, how dare he hold your cat captive? Like that is Oh my god, I'm definitely gonna whoop his ass. Like his whole his whole oh, demeanor know. just changed. Like a moment ago, he's like, he didn't give a fuck about her cat. And all he's, of a sudden he's motivated. Now he's like motivated. He's like, oh my god, I get to touch breasts. Like, yes, fuck yeah. the, the bat the fuck the bat devil. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're saving your cat right <laughs> now. Today, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Say less. Say less. Like, yeah. So I thought that was like a just his demeanor, just like Denji's like switches back and forth. And I feel he is very um manipulated when it comes to females. <gasps> and a lot of uh, every female he meets is literally always manipulated. Oh him. my god, I know. Everyone, like the the bomb devil, when he met the bomb devil. Yeah. Um, how easily she was able to manipulate him and like just like make him feel like, oh, this could potentially be something or whatever. Like he was even like, I'll escape with you, or like even even like towards the end like how she was like there to murder him and he still was like well i still want you like if you really want to be with me or whatever i'll wait for you at this cafe and there he is sitting there with flowers but then makima gets to the bomb devil and she never shows up to the cafe but power does and the power starts eating his fucking flowers and she's he's like you're not supposed to eat that like and just I the dynamic it. between denji and power is pretty funny too yeah so so those are a couple of my favorite characters so i do like puchita i know he's only in there for like you know the first couple episodes or whatever yeah but i just love dogs and i don't know like so I, I don't have my keys on me but my my key to like the key that i use or whatever is a little puquita so puchita no so it's a puquita oh because <laughs> <laughs> the car key because the key okay. Oh, okay, okay 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 so i just love the puchita and then I'm like you, know, you said it right and then you said puquita and i'm like i think it's puchita <laughs> yeah no, it's, it's the puchita okay, okay 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 but um what you call it so he's in the first episode or whatever and then in the manga you know you just you fill in the voice with your head but in the anime it was just like kind of Weird. Just so you know, I've always loved listening to you talk about your dreams, Denji. Like, I think I remember him having like a very like surprising voice. He was like, because he was speaking English to uh, Denji. But yeah. I don't know. So my, I do like Denji. He is fun and funny. He kind of like makes the manga for me. So... There's other funny moments like with power, but like those two and maybe another character. I can't remember their, her name right now, but um, what she look like? She's the one with the uh, black hair. I think she's the other half of uh, Aki, like the one who who's always like they're smoking. They're trading cigarettes. Oh, uh, Himeno. Himeno. Yeah, that's her name. The one with the eye patch. Yes. Always smoking. Yeah. Chains like chain smoking. Yeah. So, yeah, she, yeah. so she, she's nice, too. Or right? as far as like, you know, like with the vibe or the funniness or whatever. Yeah. I do like the look of Chainsaw Man as well. He kind of reminds me of another favorite character of mine, Wolverine. Yes. So I just love that grisly like look that he has yeah um he, you know, he's got fresh kicks on he's he got a fucking chainsaw out of his face like the eyes he's got like the signature orange he's got an iconic look yes oh um, and it looks like it hurts <laughs> like to have these chainsaws like coming out of you when they come out does it hurt it probably does every time i think it does so that's what he says like he didn't want to hurt you know it's a painful thing but then like how you said he was actually just trying to preserve the nudie magazines yeah <laughs> but i love power she's i love strong women um she is very kooky and uh she's got cool blood powers where she can turn like blood into like a big hammer or a sword yeah. or whatever she's also just super fun and funny and she is what who i think the only good woman in the show i think at, you objectively know, at, i think so too but that's just because i feel like power has this like child mentality yeah so you can't really like and it's the same thing with denji like denji has this 
really like because he's still stuck in his childhood but that's why i like them together not yeah. like romantically i just mean no no like, not romantically like, like vibe just friends back to back yeah, there's, yeah, like yeah. A, there's like a scene where they're both in the, the hospital and i forget who was like it's not neither of them are hurt but they're like eating chips or whatever and aki oh. aki's always getting hurt he's always ends up in the hospital i, I think so <laughs> because he doesn't have the healing powers like denji and power have right. you know what i mean yeah, yeah yeah he's just a regular human that <laughs> has contracts with devils and be able to summon them like even yeah, yeah. aki said like if i have to summon the fox demon i literally my contract means i have to give up something of mine yeah. like a body part or something or flesh or whatever yeah so th- every time he summons the fox demon um the fox devil he then has to go to the hospital for like something right yeah because yeah, it drains him or whatever yeah so he, he's nice and then as far as like the devils i don't really have too many devils that i like i like the bomb girl devil she's kind of cool only just off the vibe or i don't hate you know overusing that word but just off of her look like she's you know she's she looks pretty cool yeah she looks like uh i remember we were talking about elfin lead yeah Yes. about how she's you know from the with the mask yeah like so, so from, the, yeah, yeah. from the neck down she's just a regular woman and then from but from the neck up she's got like this big bomb mm-hmm. on her head you know i think her power is very unique so you have the katana devil he's cool whatever i like his hat but um <laughs> I like his he, hat <laughs> i do like his hat but you know it, it's straightforward it's like the chainsaw man but it's a sword you know he's got a yeah. sword in his face sword in his arms but the bomb devil was a little bit creative um as far as like a look as you know an antagonist um, when it comes to devils though i think i like makimas the best like really? her being what is her um she's got like chains or whatever i think she's a control control devil she's the control devil like i just something about makima is like at the beginning you're just like there's something more to her like there's there's something more to her and as soon as from the beginning as why because she's like manipulative yeah because towards denji like she's like you're a dog don't say nothing but yes or wolf i'm like come on denji but Denji likes that. Because <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know any better. I know you don't know any better. Because he is a dog. Because he's got yeah. that dog in him. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all? We're all canine by heart, man. <laughs> uh, but still, like, Makima, I don't know, man. Something about her, like, demeanor and just... It's it's, it's pretty good, man. Um, and I feel bad for Aki, you know? Like, I feel like he really tries to, like, keep Denji in power, in control. And, like... And it sucks because they both live with him. So he doesn't get that peace and quiet that he wants I when know, you go home. Like you're trio, fucking though. exhausted and then here's denji and power full energy i know like you don't get a break <laughs> i know i love it i fucking love it and i think like that i felt like damn bro i feel for aki oh my god like I, you're stressed at work your your job really like entitles of you probably dying anytime soon and yep. when you're on your day off you just want to go home and relax and here is this two childlike people knuckleheads just up and down jumping and fighting and arguing and you're just like bro i just need a day off i know and he is like no nonsense too yeah so. yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right man so i don't dislike the gun devil i do think he's a little bit overpowered um and there's like a scene with the darkness devil and that's kind of like where the story kind of got away from me so i was like what the hell am i even looking at like when they were like in the de- in the in hell or in hell, yeah, they were in hell. I was just like, what is this? Not what does this have to do with the story, but like how how are we here? <laughs> you know, like you know, it's it's, I it's, mean, it's manga and an anime, so obviously it's wild. Also, what I will say, something that I will fall back to, or even like full circle is that the manga is very artistic. It is. So I kind of excuse it. And then for favorite moments, so just most of the scenes with him in power, I think they're really nice. So there's a scene with the Eternity Devil. It's the devil where they get stuck in this room and then they're they're there for, I think, days. They're like, if you guys throw Chainsaw Man in here, I'll eat him and then I'll let you guys go free. So this is him. This is like, like as soon as Denji. Eternity Devil. He, that's when he, it's when he first gets like indoctrinated with the public safety group. So they, they is go, that what they go to that time. hotel and they're yes. stuck there for days because yes. it's like an eternity loop or something like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, okay. 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 I, I now remember. The reason that I have it here on my favorite is because I was like reading it and, you know, it is nice or whatever. And I'm like, you know, giving it a chance. And I do, even if I'm not feeling it for like a second, I still push through. There's like a scene where they all turn on him. And then Aki is the only one like in control. And he's like, hey, you know, we're not going to turn on each other or whatever. So Chainsaw Man or Denji, he jumps into the Eternity Devil. And he's like, you know what? Don't worry. I got him. I'm going to kill him down there. He thinks he's going to eat me. But whatever. So he eats him. And then it's like this vicious cycle. He turns into the Chainsaw Man. He's He just keeps regenerating. And then the way that the devils work is that you get more power, the more blood you consume. What Denji finds out is that if he just keeps drinking the Eternity Devil's blood, then he'll just keep getting his chainsaws back. Because after a while, his chainsaws go away. 
Yeah. So for three days they fight and, you know, they do it like, you know, like in the manga. So at the end of the manga, he's like, he looks like he's about to die, but then he, he just comes back. So then they just fight for three days or whatever. And then finally the eternity devil is like, okay, I can't do any more of this. Please kill me. Yeah. And, he, and then he just kills him. <laughs> so I think the girl that we were talking about, Himeno, Himeno, she has like ghost powers or whatever. So he like, then she's arm gets chopped off and then she gets her, the hand and like rips the cord. And then he just comes back and it's just like, like just an aid to like help him. It's so great. That's what I, that's, and it happens earlier or whatever, but that's when I was like, okay, I can see where this is going. I see this is like, so I do like the vomit kiss. I don't like the vomit kiss, but <laughs> I like it off the court because at least in my friend group, like we, that's a meme that we send to each other. We, ha we haven't sent each other in a while, but it's just so fun and funny. Like it's so gross and it's, I don't, I want to, I don't want to say he deserves it, Denji, but he's like worried because he likes Makima, but then he wants the kiss from this other girl that they made a deal with. So he's making these contracts all over the place. He, so he's like hey you know if i do this or whatever um you'll kiss me right so he's like yeah i'll give you a big french kiss and they're all drinking or whatever so then she goes to kiss him he's like oh she's looking at me oh, i don't care it just feels so good it's kind of warm oh my god is that her tongue i think that's her tongue wait her tongue is kind of squishy and then boom the next panel she's vomiting all in his mouth nasty and that's basically his first kiss <laughs> right that's a so it's a memorable first kiss oh <laughs> he's never God. gonna let that one go if some shit like that would happen to me bro oh man i would not kiss anybody first ever. of all why are you even uh this is why you shouldn't be kissing people that are intoxicated she was you, passed out drunk she just yes. woke up and went to kiss him no 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 no, no. <laughs> that would ruin uh <laughs> So that, that's just a fun moment. And then the last one I have here is when him and Aki, so the Katana Devil, and I think it's the Katana Devil, or if it's not him, it's somebody else. There's like a scene where they kill a lot of the uh, public safety people and they kill them on the butt or on the train. Yeah. And it got to the point where they kill these people. And then I'm thinking that they're going to come back to life because, you know, like I said, with the Eternity Devil, then you just like it was like a loop. So, yeah. you know, these are not devils, though. So they kill them for real, for real. And I was like, damn, what the fuck? Well, yeah, because majority of the people in the public safety are just regular humans. Right, right. And which, the only which powers are, I, I that they have is either a contract they have made with a devil. But right. if that contract does not involve them regenerating or reviving then there's really like aki like aki has he had to make another contract with the future devil right oh you know? yeah they told him when, like how he was gonna but die or whatever if he still died it's not like the future devil was gonna save him so whatever so they, they kill one of the girls they kill like one of their friends mm -hmm. so and it's aki's homegirl catch the katana devil and then they tie him up or whatever and they're by the train yards they're kicking him in the nuts <laughs> it's like it's such a bonding moment and he's like hey man uh, uh aki comes to denji and then she's like, hey, I think th this is the guy who he'll kill that girl. And he's like real sad about it or whatever. So they start kicking, kicking him, him in the, the nuts. They're like, they make a bet. They're like, oh, let's see who can make him scream the loudest. So they're kicking him over and over again. And it's, you know, in the, in the anime, they play like nice music. Like it's like this real nice scene and then um, you kind of can hear music when you're reading the manga too because they even say like i wonder if you can hear this in heaven and it's like and it's a bonding moment because up until then aki and denji don't get along like no. he saved him when the team uh turned against him but for the most part you know aki doesn't really approve of denji's not methods but his reasons and motivations so yeah. say, if you're going to be a, a public if you're going to be a devil hunter, it needs to be for the right reasons, not because you want fame or girls or whatever. Yeah. Like you need to do it like because, you know, That's your true. fucking family was killed by a devil or you want to protect the world or whatever. So Denji's like, no, I just want a girlfriend, a sandwich and a nap. <laughs> you know, right. I think it was a sad moment, though, when um, he mental. He meno died. Yeah. Um, I think that's the the oh, what are you talking about? That's the girl who died, yeah. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That was like um Aki's first mentor. And it's funny because it meno was like, I've seen people come and go all the time. So there's not to say like why become attached to each other if at any moment you can die. Yeah. I mean she's kinda hard that's what I'm saying. She's hard bodied, but Yeah. But she does open up to Aki and eventually they do become like really good friends. Yeah, no, then then it's nice. Yeah, but when he when she died, I know Aki took it really hard. And even Denji was like, you know, for a person that I kind of had feelings for, how come I don't feel anything about her death? And he kept like questioning, like, is it because my heart is technically a devil? Oh, maybe. So like, I just don't feel emotions. But then I think Makima kind of like says like, well, how do you feel about this or that? Like, if you feel like this, then you do have emotions or something like that. Like Makima is always there to give him some type of like reassurance to Denji or something like that, like uplift him back 
again. Talking about like how you were saying like um what made the devil or the chainsaw man um so strong because the other devils feared him, but that's because he had a certain power. So I don't know what it is about the chainsaw either. No, he had a power. What power? It was um you don't know? You, tell, tell me. So the power that he had that um if he eats a certain devil, oh. he can erase them. Right. That's yeah, that's what it is. So it was a fear of like of being gone, being for gone forever. forever. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't remember. But why? Which, you know, how? What is right? Because it? It, what does chainsaw have to do with erasing people's power? But I, I guess it was just and I feel like sometimes maybe it was something that was just added to just maybe though. Maybe. You know? Maybe. Maybe he didn't think about like all the way with this Maybe. anime or this manga itself but i mean the turn that it takes from arc one to two it does get a little bit more personal yes um with so Denji. so it could be like him maybe like trying to build it up or maybe he did he he led us one way he didn't know how it was going to end so then he you know made a sharp left yeah but i don't know i don't i really don't know well so he does train and it's not he doesn't get strong because he trained but um something i forgot to mention they have like i forget his name also it's the guy with like all the scars on his face that yeah. trains him in power there's like and you know um, but that's the only training montage that i've seen but yeah, it wasn't but really like there's like a scene where he's training them and he freaking he knows that they're that you know he's a devil and power is a fiend he freaking stabs him in the face oh my god he's oh like, yeah just, even like when they met he was like come here let me give you guys a hug oh and he, he like, chokes him out he just like cracks their necks yes. and they're like on the ground with like, i know and then he pours the blood and he's and like he's like he's just like, just remember get back that up. you guys drink blood you guys are you're good to go right, <laughs> right right no he's good he's good man no but yeah but like the ending was cool like just denji like all of a sudden like takes half his organ and wraps around his neck like it's a fucking yeah a scarf scarf and, and now he's like overpowered and stuff like that just I'm fighting not, everybody I'm, Body, like I'm not a fan nothing. of the look, to be honest. You didn't um, like it? I'm not. I don't dislike it. I'm just. I don't know. I'm not really. It was kind of gross in a sense. Kind of gross. I think maybe he's too buff. I'm not really a fan of like buff, buff like that. Like I like that he's able to jump around. Like I say, he looks like Wolverine. Like Wolverine yeah. is a short, stocky, hairy man, and he can, you know, you can pick him up and throw him at a sentinel. Yeah. You know, like the way Chainsaw Man jumps around. Like, but if he's big like that, I don't know. Like I'm not a fan of Broly. I do like a slimmer um, character. Yeah, because like we were talking about about uh, Goku, how every kind he was training, but then he was just getting bigger, but he wasn't getting faster. Yeah. So he, that's why he wanted to do the Super Saiyan two was just so he can increase his strength without sacrificing speed. Yeah. So I think once he does get too big, it gets a little off putting for me. But I mean, over no overall, 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 overall it's really really nice. So and then as far as like you know video games and movies, right now there's no plans for any video games or there's no video games in development. Rumors about season two. Yeah, go for it, man. There was a rumor or whatever that there was going to be a season two and a possible movie that leaked on Weibo. So Weibo is the Chinese or it's described as the Chinese version of Twitter. They put some tweet out or whatever that said that there was going to be a movie and a season two. But the thing that I, I don't want to give it any validity is because this is a direct quote from the um, CEO of MAPA. OK, so he says, so financially Chainsaw Man was a complete success. However, I am not satisfied with whether it has the same impact as uh, JJK. JJK and points to the low sales of DVDs and Blu-rays as to why he thinks that the anime fell short, you know, for like like the numbers that they wanted with something like this. Well, like I said, like Chainsaw Man at that time when it was released, it was a very hyped anime. Um, I mean, a lot of people were talking about it, but can it stand next to the big dogs like JJK, like One Piece, like Naruto, Baruto? Like, can it be? And especially Mappa, like they're probably just want to focus on on those big animes are probably going to bring them more money yeah. um and i think for them to like do a season two they have to invest money just to like reamp it up again and they get do, yeah. people back interested yeah, in just chainsaw but that's where they would have to like release a video but game would it or release be a movie or as something? successful as season one you know i'm not saying season one was not successful and that's you know he, i've also he, heard he rumors it, he that in it was japan, a complete success that in Japan, like a lot of people weren't really into Chainsaw Man like that, like, no. as we are here in the Western. No, Chainsaw Man is big in Japan. That's what I'm saying. So the it's big in Japan. I'm out in Tokyo because I'm big in Japan. But like you said, they weren't selling DVDs or Blu-rays, right. which is another way of they making profit. And right. like you said, at the end of the day, like it's all numbers. Yeah, and you want to get the most out of it, especially yes. if you're going to invest. I mean, if it happens, it happens. I just feel like it's just been such a long time I just that, think that I feel like if it should have happened, 
if it should have happened, it would have happened. But Does that make sense? Because sometimes, I've been, okay, because you know how we talked about this, I think in the um, Jinjo Ito episode where we were talking about um, Goblin Slayer. Okay. And how I was saying like, oh, like how good the anime, the first season was. But then it took so long for season two that I feel like the hype just died down so much, even if they were trying to advertise it and, you know, make it hyped again. It just it didn't hit. And then, and then it gets to the point where you're like, it's been such a long time that you feel like you have to rewatch season one just to kind of feel like remember yeah. what had happened in order to restart season two. And some people don't like that. I, I personally don't like that. I have to go back to reference season one to remember you know what season two is all about or you know what i mean but is it like that a sto- is it a story like that like an attack on titan or is it something that you can't just pick up because they do that all the time with like so imagine like they're bringing king of the hill back you know people re-watch those episodes or that'd be like if they brought the office back or like if if season one or the first couple seasons or whatever was strong enough that people are already or have already rewatched it i think just bringing it out like a year or two years later wouldn't be that bad i just think that with the endless cycle and the endless hunger like you got to feed the beast of like there's always new animes coming out and, always you know, you, people only want to watch what's new they don't really want to go back to an anime that's two three years four five six seven years old i don't know but sometimes i feel like if they would drop a season two it would be more for the fan base that's already there for chainsaw man yeah and sometimes but it's, it's hard because mm-hmm. you're, I feel like when you drop a season two, it's because you're pleasing that fan base. How big is that fan base? I think it's pretty big, bro. We that's had- that's my question. Like, you know, for JJK, they built a huge fan base. So, of course, they're going to drop a season two. Now, maybe for Chainsaw Man, the fan base was decentable. Like you said, it was successful, but right. not as successful, like hugely successful so, as JJK. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. And he's comparing it to another anime that they also have the numbers for in the same studio. Mm-hmm. But just like how I was talking about earlier at the top of the episode with the news, he's looking at the wrong thing. He's looking at Blu-ray and DVD sales to judge Because maybe successful. that's how they make profit. That is how they make profit. And that, that's, okay. that's Because like you said, at the end of the day, they are, they're using a majority of the money up front to market these animes so that people can watch. But if we're not watching them through what they would bring, a, even a, a royal percentage, you know, like Country right. Row or right. wherever platforms they are then presenting these anime. Right. Because a lot of people don't watch it like that. Some people watch it through, you know, third party websites for free. You know what I mean? Why pay for something that you can just watch for free? And then, but they don't make money up that. Like there's no, I don't think there is any royalties from that. No. So then not. they make their money through like, you know, um, merchandise, DVD sales, blue rays or whatever so of course they have to base it off that so what i'm saying is that if chainsaw man was successful but they're basing it off jjk successfulness so if if chainsaw man sold five million copies right and that five million copies is technically considered a successful anime but jjk sold double that in their first season so technically they succeeded or overpassed that successfulness. Then why not just continue with JJK and just drop Chainsaw Man? I mean, there is a base for Chainsaw Man, but I just don't think it's as big. And especially if you're dropping a season two. But that's what I'm saying. You're looking at it numbers wise. You look you're looking at it five minutes. As a fan, 10 I million. would love a season two. <laughs> yeah, wait, that's what you're as saying. a fan, I, I'm not saying that I don't want a season two. I would love a season two of Chainsaw Man. But also looking the at the benefit it as, of Chainsaw Man is that it is not a regular show shonen jump style story that it's it is very artistic artistic. and it is very gross and you know you have like but again scenes like that in naruto and when dragon ball but you're talking as a fan we're talking about numbers i know i mean we're wearing the white shirt with the tie we we gotta start thinking like corporate man it's all about the numbers as soon as this podcast is done i'm taking this damn tie off (laughs) (laughs) i i do hear you as like a fan service yes i would love a season two Uh, i think it would be great i was expecting to be a season two and i was surprised that season two never came and it's it's still up in the air it's not like anything is confirmed yet you know what i mean but i i can't see like if the numbers just didn't hit right like the way it was supposed to it just bothers me that they don't believe in their own product like i know they didn't write chainsaw man but well and i mean i I can't wait till we get to that episode of studios because I know there's a lot that goes into like, you know, what studio because that was like my number one question. Like what studio gets what anime or what? How did they decide? Like this no, is man. the studio that's going to make the animation for I'm, this manga. I'm big in this episode up for season two. Like this is going to be a 
big episode for us, you know, bigger than our tsunami episode, bigger than the villains episode. I think it's going to be a real good episode. Very informational for the, like for the, for the people that just even have the same questions as like we do. Yeah. You know, we're here to an- we want to answer those questions because I'm definitely like very curious about that. Yeah. No, but it's, still it's, like, it's, you know, because anime, there's 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 more manga animation than there is actual anim like the animation part of it if that makes yeah. sense you know what i mean mm-hmm. but then it's like what when do they choose which manga to turn into an animation or like what story like do they present it or are they like oh well this story sounds good like you know what i mean like um the one that you like uh wild strawberry would they make that into animation do you think it's worth being turned into animation i think so yeah i think so i think that's, I think that's always the plan and what studio would do it do you have a peripheral studio that might do you think would do that justice <laughs> You know what I mean? Like questions like that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, man. So if there is a season two for the fans, I think we all wanted. I mean, I definitely want it. I know Xavier probably doesn't want it because he doesn't even like the way it looks. Just just keep releasing the manga. Yeah. That's all I care about. But um, but for like me, I would definitely want a season two. Um, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I at this point, like I don't see it happening just because there's no even confirmation on it. It's just everything is just like rumors at this point. And the rumors for season two came out like a couple of months ago. And Mappa, you know, it's definitely been publicized as far as like rumors. Um, they haven't said anything. They haven't confirmed or denied it. Yeah. So so it is what it is. But um, if you guys are true Chainsaw Man fans, definitely read the manga. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. read the manga. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much anything else you want to say about Chainsaw Man before we sign out nope, <laughs> of nope, this nope. world? <laughs> well, until we move to the next segment of the show, bro. So let's move on to the next segment, man. What we're reading, watching, and playing Xavier, young Morgan Freeman, please let the world know what you're reading, watching, and playing. So reading, watching, and playing. So reading, same shit, man. Like I, I, I try to read like different things. I am reading a lot, but so I'm reading Chainsaw Man, reading The Wild Strawberries, reading Doctor Stone, and reading One Piece. Jesus. I will admit, I'm slowing down on the One Piece. Nah, man, that's not the time to slow down. I know, I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's not the time, so, man. We're not gonna get to the One Piece episode till like season are, seven right. of the podcast. So, so we. <laughs> We did Attack on Titan and we did that because it just had ended. So we're doing Chainsaw Man randomly just because, you know, you and I both really like Chainsaw Man. Like you were talking about, we might do another Chainsaw episode next season or two seasons from now, but... Yeah, um, just to like com- wrap it up. Right. And or same thing like when we did our Dragon Ball or other, uh, what was it, Demon Slayer episode. So Full Metal is done. So we won't have to touch that again unless no. something else comes up. But with One Piece, I don't want to hit it too, too many times. Oh. So what we, what we can do. <laughs> Actually talking about um, AOT. Tell me. We might have to bring that one back up because there is uh, a lot. Well, there there isn't. It's already confirmed. There's already pages of its um, alternative ending. Attack, oh, Attack on, on Titan. Attack on Titan. Right, 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 right. There is an alternative ending. They already written yeah. like half the book. Yeah, you told me. You told me. Yeah, the, is is your is your homeboy Captain Levi in it? Um, I think so. They so this this like is it was a whole switch up because people were so um unimpressed and they was not satisfied with this ending and the I ending on the animation was slightly different from the anime from the manga. Okay. So they changed it just a little bit of just mostly it seems like it was a change in the conversation between Armin and Aaron. Okay. Just like that conversation they had in that dream world where they were trying to both explain to each other why they were doing what they did and whatever. Right. Um, I think in the manga, it was more Armin just being like, Aaron, you suck. You shouldn't have done that, blah, blah, blah. And then in the animation, it was English like, Aaron, it was more like Armin just like both trying to carry that weight on both, you know, on his shoulders too. Like right. I was responsible for this too. Yeah. Kind of thing. So I think that was like the the, the difference between both uh, the manga and the animation. But like I said, people were not satisfied with the ending and they felt like it could have been done better. So I think the author is rewriting and alternative ending um and maybe trying to because i know um jp was saying that there was like holes towards he the end he heard that there oh, they, holes. He had, well i guess there has there was some type of hole so they're trying to fill in in with the alternative ending so you either like the you either like the manga ending you like the first animation ending or you're gonna like the alternative ending um but i think that's just a way like to either. satisfy the fan yeah. and mapo is gonna be doing the animation for that alternative ending uh, are they yeah okay cool well sometime I mean, next year so 
Very but nice. the the actual chapters are out already. So if you want to read it, oh really? You definitely could. So I know we're definitely going to cover that. Oh, are we? Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> technically, I know you were saying like how Full Metal Alchemist is done. We're uh, not going to be doing any future episodes on Full Metal Alchemist. I know, but, but I did say yeah. And if we something did comes say up. about like AOT, like well that is done. So we're not going to be talking about. But them like damn, bro. I actually forgot to tell you there is an alternative ending. So we're probably going to be, be talking about it again. That's fine. I don't mind. All right. <laughs> so then uh, playing. So I'm just playing the Demon Souls game. That's the game that we're trying to stream. So the stream schedule's up on there. I was able to record it, so I'm going to chop it. It was like two hours plus. Uh-huh. So I'm definitely going to have to chop it. It's going to be our first time doing something like that. So playing that for the stream, and then we did get Street Fighter 6. Yes. So it's I'll a game I played sure. before, but... I really want to get the Mortal Kombat 1, though, man. I know. We just don't have... Play, to, we don't I want to the, play we, as The Omni new man. system. Yeah, I mean, I love Mortal the Kombat. DLC, man. That Omni-Man and... um. Oh, Je- uh, the Homelander. guy Homelander from um, the boys. The boys. And the last thing that I've been watching for Family Movie Night, we watched Home Alone off of your recommendation. So I hadn't seen it before. I hadn't seen any of them. And even my what? son, even my son saw it. He's like, "Oh, now you're cultured." I'm like, "Shut up! You're 13." You've what never are, seen Home about? Alone. I've January. never seen Home Alone, and everyone makes me feel like a freak because of it. You've never seen Home Alone. <laughs> I've never seen Home Alone. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Where have you been living? I've been living right here. <laughs> I've been living in Vice City. Oh, lordy, man. So I saw it and it is really nice so i should have seen it a while ago but i i remember i was laughing out loud at that movie yeah man this is like one of those holiday movies it's like a must give watch they're they played all the time it's like a my 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 ara carry kind of thing like oh right i just i don't know I, I it's just one of those movies that just fell under my radar like i knew of it like i get it you know he's home alone but like, <laughs> yeah. i didn't really know it's the title the bro <laughs> yeah but i didn't know if it, if it was like really that good or not no it's good i like it no man. it is it is it is so we're gonna watch the second one i think not this sunday but the next Sunday. There's three or two? There's three. So I okay, heard the okay. third one isn't that good. We might watch it, but... Um, just to finish all three of them? Just to finish all three. I heard yeah. that the, he's not even in the third one. Like, it's a different Home Alone. Person, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. I oh, then skip it. Skip I, haven't it. Seen, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, but... Um, and then the last thing I'm watching it is Invincible. So... Are you still on... You're, you started season two or are you still on season one? No, season two. I'm starting okay. season two. I, I love that show, so... We were talking about the boys earlier with Gen V, but we watch a lot of media for this podcast, like the shows and the movies and things like that. And Mm -hmm. I just love that show. I that show makes me like really happy. (laughs) It goes back to like the the thing of like villains, uh, heroes turning into villains. But that's not why I like it. I just like it because it's really it's well written and it's just so funny and fun like they did. So, you know, if you've ever seen Invincible, each episode, the way that they introduce the title is they'll say, oh, oh, I'm invincible, but he won't say invincible. No, yeah, they'll title. just start. <gasps> you might as well give up. I'm. Title, yeah. So at least for season two, they'll be like, is he really? <laughs> right. So for, but for the first episode of season two, they say it a couple of times and I'm like, damn, why didn't, why haven't they dropped the, the title intro? So not until the very end after the credits, then he's like, I need to kill. Boom. Invincible. And I was like, damn, jumped into the second episode right yeah. then and there. So then they do it again. And then maybe on the, I think it's the third episode. It's like uh, a wordplay. Alan the alien. Yeah. So you think that he's going to say invincible. Because sometimes to change the entire universe, You have to be... But then he says, Alan, you know, for, to to be able to beat these Viltrumites, you need to be Alan, Alan. <laughs> the, the alien. <laughs> and it's voiced by Seth Rogen. And I don't know, man, it's just so fun and funny and th- like... Oh, it's like, unique, man. I like it. There's like a scene with the narrator and I was just like, damn, I love this show. Like it was making me so happy. And I just, I love watching like good stuff as much as I like watching bad stuff, but I was watching just, a, just good, me. Uh, and just it was good like, stories, man. And just well written out. And, and I love, just, su- I love superheroes. I do. So. Invincible, um, the, the boys, like just anything like that. It's just like when the story is good, the story is good, man. It's captivating. It's gross too. It's like fuck up the alien, his eyeballs oh, out yeah. his head. Oh my God. No, nah, man. In comic books, it gets... If you read the comic books, it gets way more graphic. There's more to it. The story definitely diverts from the actual. I don't mind that. Like I don't care about animation, that at all. I'm but tre- I'm treating Invincible like an anime. No, it's like good. I'm, like I'm just not gonna read the manga. I'm just gonna watch the anime. Yeah. So same thing. I'm not gonna. 
You're not going to read the comics? Nah, I don't need to. You don't really have to. I, it, like, it's it's a whole different story, but it's just as good. You're not going to be disappointed with either, being honest. So what about you, bro? What you reading? What you watching? What you playing? What I'm reading, watching, and playing. Let's see. Reading. I just got done finishing um, Kaiju number eight, um, nice. the last um, chapter or the last volume that came out. So I just got done reading that. I'm going to bring it in. I thought you were reading it. Did you stop? I was. Uh, <laughs> I did stop, to be honest. But I not because I didn't like it or nothing. I just, um, I'm reading four things. Uh, so <laughs> okay, what okay, happens sometimes you. is that. Uh, you like rotate, kind of, you rotate yes. a couple things in, rotate like, oh, a couple things out. Have, just so like, you're, you know. I had five episodes of Chainsaw, man. I got to catch yeah. up or, you know. No, no, I hear you. I hear you, man. So I just got done reading that. Um, Besides that, not much with the reading. Playing. Um, again, not much. I just haven't had time to play, but I'm definitely want to pick up either Street Fighters just so I can get some hours in so that when we do do the like the live streaming or whatever. Yeah. You know, I'm not getting my ass whooped from left to right. <laughs> and then I'm looking out here like, damn, this nigga, he don't know what he's doing. He's even just if sm- smashing button. <laughs> even if you practice for 100 hours a day, you'll know, you'll still get your ass whooped. Bro. Nah, man. You see, I got to put the hours in, man, so I can talk all the shit. And then... I'll kill you, bro. i kill you. <laughs> and then uh, watching, I started to watch this new anime, but I didn't... I'm not liking it. It's called Undead Unlock. Um, so basically, it's like these humans that have like special powers. So like one of the main characters is a female and her like power is unlock. So the more she feels for you or like the more she has a certain connection uh, towards you, Um if she touches you, you become unlucky. So like something will happen to you. And then Will you die? Yes. Like wow. it could be like that for something unlucky, like a a tree something will fall on you or or whatever. You're eating a hot dog and there's a, a mustard on your shirt. Yeah, if she doesn't like have any like I think like the less she has an emotional connection to you, you still get something unlucky, but it's not as bad. But if she feels something for you, it could literally mean death. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then there's this guy, which is the other main character, and his power is basically he's undead. No matter what you do to him, he cannot die. He would just continually revive himself or gener- re- regenerate his body. So like if you cut off his head, he would just regenerate his body again. And then he just learns, he he has lived for like thousands and thousands of years. So he's gotten to the point where he's just like bored as hell with life. He's like Kaido where um, from One Piece where he's just like trying to commit suicide because he's just so powerful and he just can't find anybody to end his life. It's kind of like that. Like he just finding something to end his life. So when he finds this girl, he thought he thinks that if he makes her fall in love with him, when he touches him or touches her because of that connection being so powerful, he'll be unlucky and finally die. Mm. So that's his thought. So at first couple episodes was good. Then they got introducing to like organizations that are chasing after them. And then other nominees. I don't know. It, was, it just got a little crazy and I just lost interest. So you, you didn't like it I didn't because like it. it steps away from yeah, the love story? Like not the love story, but just like where it was first coming from. Like, okay, okay. Like, you know, he like I, I was liking it at first just because like I, I, I get it. You know, it's it's all right. You know, it's um. It looks good, but then after that, it just kind of lost me along the way. And I was just like, eh, I don't think I would be revisiting this anime anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, same thing for like the other anime that I was talking about, the the one with the vending machine. Right. No, you said you finished it though. I finished that one. So you're not watching season two, bro? Nah, <laughs> I don't see a reason to watch the season two, man. No? So it's just certain animes that you're just like, and again, it falls back to like, why was these animes chosen to be made into animations? You know what I mean? Like... It wasn't even that good. But that's just me, man. That's just me. Um, besides that, like I said, I've been watching Invisible. Um, I've been watching, what else is called? Um, JJK, mm-hmm. for sure. <laughs> Fucking fanatic at this point. And One Piece. You know, um, they just finished the last episode where they finally leave the Wano um, island. Right. And they're on pursuit for the next the next step, I guess. Or the next way of finding the One Piece um but yeah but in the manga it seems very promising this new arc yeah so i'm excited about that 
Um, but besides that, man, that's pretty much it. I wish my life was more eventful. <laughs> no, man, what do you mean? That's, that's good stuff, bro. Just anime related stuff, you know, like nothing crazy. All right, man. Well, but that's the show. That's that the is show. the show. That is the show. Um, don't forget to subscribe, guys. Definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on TikTok. We always making shorts um, where you can get little previews of our episodes. Um, but for sure, we're definitely on Instagram. I feel like that's our main platform of choice when it comes to like just updating you guys with anything that's going on with the podcast or the anime community. Yeah. So definitely follow us on Instagram. We're always posting about something that might be happening or some rumors or anything that's happening with us in the podcast. So definitely follow. And remember that you can definitely listen to our podcast in almost every platform, including um, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, and and of course, now on YouTube podcasts, definitely share and let people know about us, man. Spread the word. Let them know about the norm. Become a normie. We're about to reach 10K plays for our podcast. Oh, we're right. sitting at like 9,500 and something plays. So we're close to that 10K mark, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, you know, and then one day that 10K will turn into 100K. 100K will turn into half a mil. And the next you know, we're at a million plays. So step by step, right? Step by step. Just got to keep trucking along, bro. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoy Chainsaw Man as much as we do. We'd love to hear from you guys. And like we say at the end of every episode. Tune in next time for scenes from the next episode of the Hyperbolic Podcast. Where Lewis and X kick it with the best anime studio out there. Studio Ghibli. Deuces. Good night.